Uh, Ian. Yeah. End of the year. We didn't really talk about what well, some of our favorite <laughs> topics were uh, of the year, but if there was one uh, saga that, that we talked about pretty consistently, it was the television. Nico. Sure. And you think we would have a, you know, we'd have a respite for the end of the year, but you know, we, we can discuss a little bit. Um, it, it may, maybe it'll make Ian healthier talking about this. We don't know. No, probably not. Uh, but I didn't bring this up uh, last week, and I held it off. Um, I, I did play an Amico game at Sack Gamers Expo, which we'll get into. But first, Ian, and I can't see Ian's head anymore. Thank uh, you. It's right there. Uh, there was a video release. For some reason, they decided we're going to rush out four or five videos at the end of the year. Uh, gameplay videos. Like this has all happened in the past month or so with the battle tank stuff and showing other games off. And I don't know what the what the what the consideration is that maybe they're trying to, I don't know, trying to dominate the December newscape or something in, in January happening. But it's, it's all very kind of fishy. Them putting all the videos. I think they know that they have to come out and officially say that these things aren't going to be released. By I mean, they're saying quarter twenty twenty two, quarter one twenty twenty two, which they ain't have. Happening. It's not happening, no. Um, but they have never actually addressed the statement that they made that said that these, uh, some of these could be shipping out in time for the end of the year. No apologies, no sorries, nothing there. Um, so they know that this thing has got to be six months to a year off at the very least still. And I think they're just trying to make it look like things are happening uh, to either keep the investors that are still in in or to try to get more investors. What was the latest investment scheme that they were trying to, to run with? Uh, nothing's been talked about on that. They don't even bring it up. I can't imagine that did well. Fund it wasn't fundable, was it? Or was it? Fundable? I, th- I think it was fundable. Was the third third attempt? It was first fig, then the Republic campaign, then fundable, which I haven't seen anything about because I guess requires more like it being a private investment. I, sure. All I know is this: uh, it, it wasn't a good it wasn't a good Christmas for the Republic investors. No. If you know that, Ian, uh, did they see any return or or start to recoup any of their investment? No, that's the no. answer. And they've hasn't, been asking with no answers. Been, there hasn't been an update on the Republic campaign for three months, September 30th. Three months. That's insane. people that are giving you money. And you've had you've had this, uh, you know, all these videos come out. Uh, you had all this coverage, good and bad. You, you had a couple of German uh, sites cover you. I don't think there was any good coverage. I mean, honestly, well, there probably was one here or there, you know, some, some AARP fucking article or whatever that gave you a blurb, but like, there was nothing. Um, so this UI <laughs> video comes out and I think we saw a, like some semblance of a, a UI, like a year and a half ago yes. in the video. This looks a little bit similar. We always, we think it was, it looked like a DVD menu and that's what it looks like. And they did this video, a deep dive. I don't know. Excuse me. Sneak peek spelled correctly. I'll just say this about this UI, about this UI. It's awful and it's very busy. You don't know that you're marketing video games when I see this. Like, let me give, let me tell you, give me an example why. Uh, you have a screen. These are like, it's like a TV oval screen showing the, the, it's on Astro Smash. So these are spinning balls of the gameplay, which you can't see what the hell's happening. Um, and then on the right side, you have an, an oval showing it. So uh, you click on Astro Smash, Ian, I can't even see the ship in the Astro Smash going back and forth on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. You can't even see the game, first off. Um, but what's, what's damning about this, are those biplanes being shown in like 20 frames a second somehow on the screen. Like, why is this not powerful enough to show a preview of the fucking game? Uh, anyway, so the problem with this UI is that you have different focuses based upon orientation where things are on the screen. So most... Almost every single time you see a UI for um, whether it's an emulator or whether it's for um, a game console, there's no dominance of certain titles or the other. It's just, okay, you're scrolling through a room and you see what you have. This, they get smaller, the circles, as you go yeah. left to right because they're angled. So like, like Shark Shark is tiny compared to Astro Smash. So why are you giving dominance based upon where things are on the screen? That makes no sense to me. Because they thought it looked cool. I, I don't understand that, let alone the fact that, again, with the spinning globe, it's spinning and you can't even see what it is. Well, Tommy even says during the video that he wanted it to have motion always. And I don't know why. Why, why? would you? You can't why would you want that? then. Right. It's, it's incredibly busy. He says that like like it's a, 
a deeply held secret of like UI design, but it's not. You don't want constant motion. Your eyes can only focus on one thing. <laughs> I can't look at the spinning motion of skiing and look at the shark shark uh, preview and look at Astros man spinning. You can't do that. You just physically can't do that. So again, no thoughts put into it. Um, again, there's like when you switch to the, it's like the TV signal goes out on things. Again, this is like, again, a boomer console and a boomer vision of, of what it'd be like. We have a TV signal going out like it's a cable TV in the 80s. Um, and then here's the weirdest thing about this. I don't want to get too much into this because obviously um, there was font issues. Obviously, some some words were running together so that they didn't even have that uh, correctly parsed out. Um, you can uh, look at your coin and your box of, of your game. If you bought the physical product version of it, they would add that to your store. How fucking weird is that Very uh, weird. to do that? You have the physical coin. Just look at the physical. Why don't we look at the digital representation of the coin you bought on the screen? It's <laughs> the it's last just... thing I would. <clears throat> One other thing I would point out about it. Um, they did not think about the future of this UI. Uh, they did not think uh, beyond showing something because all the games are shown on the UI. This UI can't scale up. The games that you have are lit up the games that you don't have are darkened so one that's you know for a family friendly console that's uh an awful like predatory sales tactic yes. to have the kids constantly flipping through a list of games they can't play just to get to the one game or two games yes. that they can play it's extremely uh, non-family friendly to do that right it, it's like it's putting the candy right before the checkout aisle at the supermarket that's exactly what it is yes and on top of that um the uh what was i gonna say shit the um oh you can't scale that up if they actually get to the point where they want to where there's like 200 300 games for this thing you're gonna make us look at a list of 300 games to find the 10 that we own sure no it's like insane you, yeah it, there was zero thought put into it um I just then I saw a comment from Tonic. Well, only some profiles are going to have ability to go to the store. So it's still you're going to have kids say, "Oh my God, mommy!" I mean, it's not going to happen because no kids are going to want these games. But in, in in some world, a kid might say, "I want this game." Where it's like, well, maybe now you got to deal with telling your kid, "No, you can't buy that cheap game because you played the other five for ten minutes total, and so I'm not spending another ten dollars on this game." Like you're bringing up reasons that you're saying that the competitors aren't family friendly and you're throwing it in their face on this ui right you're doing that and not every parent's <laughs> going to realize that oh i got to set up a separate profile so that like they're going to put their credit card in and maybe uh little timmy or or, or sue is going to click on a game and buy a few just like that just like that yeah, it's just yep. a bad idea it's also super incomplete when you go to the settings em there's not custom icons for system versus help versus language. You know, like power is usually like a power icon. Yeah, no, it's system all just looks like the console. You know, yeah. uh, language is usually like a person talking, like a cartoon head. They're all the little widgets. They yeah, haven't even done the custom artwork yet for the settings. They're just gears. This. Yeah, they're just gears. But, I mean, it's just why even again, why even show this off at this point? There's nothing to show. Nothing. So. That's all I want to say about it. It's it's more desperation, and it's a bad, obviously a bad direction from someone who's totally out of touch with, with what people want. Um, I just thought it's funny that Italian's the first language under English when you click the language because that should not be like that. You usually do it by predomination of the of the, the speaking population. It's yeah. always Spanish after English, and then usually it's uh, French and then German and then Italian, something or, or Italian German. Like Italian's never after English in any of these, but whatever. That's a small thing they could change. They should sure. change if that's Tommy just because, Hey, I'm an Italian. Then then like, then obviously you shouldn't be running a company, but we already established that. So I went to sack gamers expo a couple of weeks ago. had a great time uh, there. And then I was in the, the, the guest section, Ian. Um, and then Ed, uh, noon Ziada was across from me. Uh, uh, Mr. Anun Ziada was a creator of Echo the Dolphin. Uh, he was with uh, Sega there and worked on uh, some other stuff. And so Ed is is uh, going to be creating Dolphin Quest. Dolphin Quest, uh, we thought was going to be, uh, you know, a game that would be coming out only on the Intellivision, Amico. Uh, Ed was super nice. He was well, to hear Tommy talk about it, it certainly, it certainly yeah. sounded that way. Oh, yeah. So I was surprised to see that it was there. And I, and I talked to Ed, super nice nice uh, fellow 
and I played the game for about 10, 15 minutes um, and then saw a few other people playing it. And um, yeah, it's the spiritual successor to Echo the Dolphin. Um, You have a dolphin, you swim around. You do flips in the water. You can you can push objects with your nose. You can communicate with other animals. Uh, it was like a two button game. Uh, there was a button to come like one. I think it was like a, an action button, and one was like a communicate button to basically. So you, I, I took over like a school of fish at one point. Like you transferred you, uh, whatever. It's like being like Aquaman. You talk to like the school of fish, and then you control them. And I guess you can do like a mini game or solve puzzles. I think I took over another mm-hmm. dolphin at one point. Um, is, this was like I'll say pre alpha. Um, because it was like um, all the gameplay elements that seemed like were there, like on on like a uh, like on a, like a, on like a semi open world. We'll just say you can go into caverns underground. You can open up these like oysters and, and get these like pearl items that you can unlock something else. So like the, the the game elements were there. You can jump out of the water into bubbles and then do like a little timing to to, to shoot to other bubbles. You know to get to a certain point. So <laughs> there was interesting game elements there and i never played echo really before so i can see the appeal though because like oh you can smoothly turn and go up and around and you know it's cute to have the different creatures there there was like i think like a like a a, a giant whale in one part of it and um i was like wow this this is gonna be this could be a, a hit it controls smoothly and you know there was no lag on it at all i'm like this could be something oh oh wait oh i, I was playing on a ps4 controller with an analog, I, I wasn't playing it on an Intellivision Nico controller. Um, right. So it turns out uh, this is not going to be an exclusive at all. This game, uh, Ed told me that um, this is going to be, you know, on you know, it'll be on, it'll be on uh, your know, PlayStation consoles. It'll be on probably Steam. They're going to do a Kickstarter probably in 2022 for it. Um, and then um, the one of the best things he said to me. It can, he said that to me, Ed, and I hope I doesn't get in trouble with Tommy, but could, you have to let this people people know what's, what's up. He said it controls great on the Switch. So obviously there'll be plans to have this on the Switch. <laughs> yeah. That's a direct quote. So it's like when you realize that these, I feel bad for some of these devs that, you know, it's almost like you're hamstrung being connected to this, this console that may never come out. I mean, Tommy used a dolphin quest as like during the, the, the disastrous e3 video it was like one of the tags to one of the categories we have action games like 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 cornhole and this and dolphin quest yeah you think like oh wow i can only play that on the on the amico okay no no ed realizes that he wants his creation to be seen as and play as many gamers as possible you want it everywhere on the switch on the ps4 and 5 and on steam and on xbox you don't want to tie this to 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 the amico you don't no absolutely not you know there's no money to be made doing that either um so um I, like i said I, I played it for a bit uh, I'll, I'll be looking forward to the kickstarter uh the one thing he did say would be exclusive <coughs> to the amico uh four players instead of two uh. so uh i don't think this is a game where you're gonna have split screen on it so i i guess there will have to be puzzles made up to solve where you have four dolphins instead of two that's right the only thing i can think about because this will be a this will be a bunch of problem solving getting <laughs> items and things like that and, and going back and forth uh, between different areas and, and i guess in the stages but again this is like pre-alpha i if i had a guess i don't want to put w- words in anyone's mouth i don't th- think this would come out next year if i did it'd be like the probably the very end of next year because like because again we're not well, if there's a kickstarter for 2022 I, I would say that this is probably 2023 yeah at earliest to be safe i'd say 2023 because like i said this was like pre-alpha it looked like it's like we have we have the game elements in here the gameplay is probably complete but like we have to build out <laughs> this game still and do a lot of that nitty-gritty work uh when it comes to it so yeah i i guess we'll see what what happens in, in 2023 for some of these devs for some of these games that for the amico that we actually want to see like the breakout uh you know reimagining that looks interesting yeah i haven't heard anything about in so long uh hopefully that comes out and we can play that because i i give that a shot in the switch probably you would as well right or or, yep. or in the ps4 I sure would. Right, any other thoughts on dolphin quest did you did you uh, play uh, echo at all when, when you were a kid I did. I played a lot of Echo. and The fun of Echo for me was just in the smoothness of the controls and swimming around and dashing and jumping out of the water. The game itself was a very cool idea. It was a very hard game. 
um i'd be interested in seeing another you know a 2d like like this is a spiritual successor um because yeah it's a neat idea